it won on racetracks as diverse as Silverstone and the Nürburgring. And it was the rally car to beat on both tarmac and the loose, on both special stages and long distance marathons. It was a game changer, a car perfectly in tune with its era. It is the Ford Escort, 50 years on. Official announcement of the new model by Ford. Unfortunately, on the transit journey from Boreham to uh, Byfleet, the sheet the tarpaulin blew off the lorry and the whole secret was out for the world to see. It was a really trend setting car, um, it, both in motorsport and in the popular imagination. It, it has a, an unusual sliding strut arrangement on the front axle and then at the rear, there's a watts linkage and torsion bar. Yeah. Up into four, back in four, a little bit of opposite lock again. Braking hard for this left hander. Stay out a bit, tightens up a lot here. Down into second for the right hander. Plenty of power. Slides nice out of this corner. 9,000 in second. Plus through this left hander in third. Up to 9,000. Changing to fourth. Three about just over 100 here. Breaking for the fast right. Through the fast right in fourth. Breaks very hard for this tight right hander. I think it was probably the best of them all because of the package. The, the Mini was very good, the Cortina was slightly bigger. The Escort, if you're trying to design a package to be suitable for world rallying of any sort, you'd end up with an Escort. Dad's sort of timing into rallying and the timing of the Escort into rallying, they sort of came together at, at the right point and it was kind of a bit of a match made in, in heaven, really. Um, he loved the car, he loved driving it. Uh, I remember one of his quotes was he, he loves going berserk in the Mark 1 Escort. Then came the Mark II, a new, neater, faster Ford Escort that still captured the soul of the epic Mark 1. It's an iconic car, uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and it was a real kind of landmark car as well. It, it followed obviously from the Mark I, which, which was a, a great car in itself, but the Mark II really took that onto another level um, and won obviously the first ever Drivers' World Championship with Bjorn Voldegaard in 79. The car completely coincided with, with the arrival of commercial sponsorship. You only had to look around, you know, big, big names, British Airways. One of the, the best was Cossack. As all the fans know, to see an Escort going round the corner was to see super opposite lock slides. It was a, a, a magnificent sight and sound. The RAC Rally was always famously Britain's biggest motorsporting event and somebody from Lombard came up with this figure that two million people were out there watching him because you had all these people going into the stages, but at the side of the road, all the way on the road sections between the stages, People would be standing at roundabouts, you know, on garage forecourts, through towns, just standing, just catching a glimpse of these cars as they went through. It, it was huge. The other big thing, I think, at that time was that people could buy Mark II Escorts. It was then a modern family car that people could almost aspire to moving up to an RS1800, and it, it just made sense as a, as, a, as a family car to go and watch these great cars out on the stages. Roger Clark, just an all-time hero. And that was all because of essentially a Mark I Escort and then a Mark II. You know, Roger did all of the development work on the Mark I. He was kind of right at the heart of that car. He was very efficient the way he drove and I think that came through in his sort of stage times. I think obviously the, there are times where he's trying to slow the thing down or maybe on the power a little bit too soon and the thing would step out. But another one of his sayings was as long as he's not looking out the rear window, he's happy. 
arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, rally, British rally driver ever. He was uh, the master of the escort. He was uh, a great person to know, very bullying, good fun, very hard driver, and not a man to be crossed. He wasn't effusive, but, but you, the way he related to people, I was at the motor club function not long ago and said, how would you describe the spirit of rallying? Roger Clark sideways in an escort. They were genuinely iconic cars, and I can't really think of cars coming along now. They're going to have the same impact in 50 years. With the Escort, it was very much part of you, and every sort of twitch, and, and uh, every time it sort of moved around, you felt everything. It would appear that for a creative operation like motorsport, there's some advantage in not having somebody looking over your shoulder all the time. I think to have five world champions behind me was nearly as good as winning the RSA. The inner arch is from a Mark I transit van, believe it or not, um, and came up with this package which Frank came over from the Tasman series to drive for the first time and must have, I would have thought, been quite impressed with. Yeah. 